Get ready, because today we're going to finally do a video on Meshtastic. Meshtastic is an important piece of the off-grid comms puzzle that you should absolutely consider for your militia or citizen readiness group. So what is Meshtastic? Meshtastic is a decentralized cell network, basically. It uses low power, low bandwidth transmissions in the 915 megahertz band, and so it's sub gigahertz. And these use LoRa radios, which are long range radios. Now that is a bit of a misnomer if you're thinking in terms of HF, it's not cross country, but it is long range in terms of line of sight because it uses a very efficient um, modulation protocol. But uh, every node that is out there that is running Meshtastic will relay your message. So that really extends your range. And the more nodes there are, the better your coverage will be. And it's all decentralized, you know, there's no cell towers out there. And it's getting more and more popular, so it's actually starting to become useful. And it also has great comsec. It encrypts things that are on private channels. However, if you're just texting in the clear, anybody can read that. And we'll also talk about how you want to safeguard your position information and all that kind of stuff. This video will showcase some niche applications with the mindset of we're prepared citizens, we're even doing militia type activities. So this isn't going to be meant as kind of a comprehensive tutorial on getting up and running with Meshtastic because there's a lot of great resources already out there. And I'll probably link a few below if you're interested. But I will show you some of the basic features that are relevant to what you might do in a militia preparedness group or anything like that. So the first is for tracking. These radios all have GPS locations on them. And uh, here's another radio. It's very small. This is specifically for tracking. As you can see, there's no screen on it. And uh, the other one I have is actually on my dog's tag because she was getting out recently, running away, and I was tired of losing track of her. So now she wears one of these. And if she gets out, I can find where find out where she is and call her home. Sequoia, come here. Sit. Good girl. There you go. Now, what do you have to say for yourself, huh? What do you have to say for yourself? Is yours going off? Yep, yours is going off. Does this mean nothing to you, Sequoia? Hmm? But uh, these are also great for if you're tracking kids or other vulnerable things in your group. And uh, you can also track your fire team members more tactically, because if you have look at the app, you can track where each of the nodes in your network are. Um, so it's kind of like ATAC in that way. You can even use this with ATAC, which I'll talk about in a little bit. One note about the position on the trackers, you'll have to go into the app and enable the precise position for the channel. And that will give you centimeter precision on the position on the map. However, if you are just wanting kind of a general radius and you don't want to exactly pinpoint your location, you can do that and then just specify how big the radius is from, you know, a couple hundred feet to miles. Okay, so let me show you how to create a new channel. So go to radio configuration, channels, and here you can see a couple I've set up. So tap the plus down in the lower right corner and come up with a channel name. So we'll just call this demo channel. And you can use the randomly generated PSK um, or you can go ahead and just come up with your own. So this 
If it's something memorable, then you can write that down and manually enter it in. But you don't have to remember it, obviously, because you can share link with another device once you've created this. So uplink and downlink enabled, don't worry about that unless you're going to be connecting it to an MQTT. Position enabled. So if this is a tracker, you'll want precise location. However, if you do not want to reveal your precise location, you can uncheck that and then um, specify the precision that other people will see. Just wanted to show you that. Um, so we'll click Save. And now I've got this demo channel. All right, so let's go to Position. And if this is a tracker, you may want to change the interval between how often it sends its location and how often it updates its own location. These were actually much higher numbers before, like 900 or something. So for a tracker, I wanted it to be uh, much more real time. So I'm not figuring out where my dog was 10 minutes ago. I changed it to 30 second interval. I wonder how low I can push this though, because if it's transmitting more often, then uh, maybe it's going to have less battery life overall. But uh, we could try one second, see what happens. Oh, I disconnected to my Meshtastic device. Well, sometimes it just flashes that error anyway, but I do believe it's in the other room, so I might be out of Bluetooth range at the moment. Anyway, I just wanted to show you those specific things. Let's get back to the applications. The second application is encrypted comms because you can't use ham radio with encrypted comms, at least not without drawing the ire of all the sad hams. So, but with this, this isn't ham radio. This is a specific, uh, what would you call this? One moment, I have to look up what this specific band is technically allocated to in the FCC rules. I'll be right back. Okay, it's called the ISM band, and that's the Industrial, Scientific, and Medical band. And basically, you don't need a license to transmit in this band up to a certain power, which is how much? I'm sure it's like, like less than a watt or something. Yeah, one watt. Anyway, so for encrypted comms with private channels, what do you have to do? Well, you have to go ahead and create a PSK, which is a private security key, and you can either randomly generate it on the app or just make up your own thing. I prefer to make one up. Just make sure it's at least 16 to 32 bits. And any other node that is on this private channel, you can communicate to with the AES encryption. And AES encryption is pretty good encryption. Uh, it's good enough for a lot of things. I don't think it's really crackable and crypto analysts, but who's going to be coming after your scrappy little group with that kind of capability? I don't, I don't personally worry about that kind of thing, but uh, some people might, I don't know. There is an Achilles heel though, and that is if anybody is able to obtain the physical device, they can connect to it and just read off that PSK and then you're compromised. So that's a real weakness of these devices. There's not a way to password protect the devices themselves, which I don't know why that's the case. That's a that's that's a real, it should be pretty easy to implement and I don't know why they don't. So if you're a Mishtastic developer out there, please I'll incorporate the capability to password protect the device itself. Very important. And there are a couple of easier ways to connect to that private channel with other devices. You can either use a QR code or a link and that way they don't have to enter that PSK manually themselves. Now, FYI, if you message random nodes you see out there in the Wild West, it's in the clear. I mean, it is encrypted, but it's just using the default key, which is like AQ equal equal or something like that, 
which, uh, so basically anybody can read it. Even if you send a direct message to another device, it's only encrypted with that default key. So just keep that in mind. It's only secure in your private channel a couple other more advanced things you can do with a Meshtastic is you can actually connect to the internet with an MQTT relay. I haven't done this myself, but you can configure some nodes to be either an uplink and or a downlink to those things. So that way, once it's connected to the internet, you can check on the device around the country, just anywhere you have internet access. So I think that's kind of cool. And I can imagine a few use cases for that. It's just that it's not going to be off grid at that point. You're relying on the internet. However, with Starlink and all those other things, even internet connectivity itself is becoming more and more off grid, which is really cool to see. And lastly, I said that you can connect your Meshtastic device with your ATAC end user device. So if you have ATAC on your Android or iTAC, you can download an extension for Meshtastic, and that will use the Meshtastic links uh, to send data to your teammates. So that way, if you don't have cell access, if you're in a certain area or the grid is down, you can still send data send positions to your other teammates on your fire team or whatever you're doing. Or, you know, I've seen this, uh, people using these at a protest where the government may be hostile, like in Hong Kong, they may be jamming cell devices. Well, they're not jamming these devices. So um, they'll be using private encrypted comms that the government has no idea about. So if you're if you're a dissident, <laughs> there, there's a thought for you too, but I wanna be careful who I'm giving ideas to on the internet, I suppose. So other problems, this came up recently with one of my devices. Uh, it was making me update the firmware. It was like, you cannot keep using this without updating the firmware. Now imagine if that had happened after the grid was down or you just didn't have access to internet, you'd be up creek without a paddle, you'd be SOL. So uh, make sure you have the firmware updated at the earliest mention of needing an update and that way you won't be caught with your pants down later. Other issues and limitations, so the range. I've already mentioned it's long range, but that's still line of sight. So you need to be within a couple kilometers of the nearest node, which for a lot of people is going to be another Achilles heel because nobody in your area is going to be using it or there's going to be nobody in your area at all because you live in the boonies. In that case, this might not be for you unless you have a lot of team members that may be meeting up in a certain area. So there's that. But in my area, there actually is a rapidly growing community of a lot of people that are using this. So I'm, I'm blessed to have a neighbor just a few kilometers from here that's got this huge relay setup thing. He's got oh, like 10 nodes in his yard. I don't know what he's doing, but he helps me really extend my range. <laughs> so that's my intro to Meshtastic. I probably left a lot out and like I said, I didn't want to make this video about all the little app settings that you gotta do. Um, there are a lot of great resources already out there, but it's not too expensive to get into. Like the little trackers are only 40 bucks. These are probably 60, maybe 80 bucks if you get a extended antenna with higher gain. Um, there's not a lot of reason to not at least dabble your toes into it. And it's definitely something to consider uh, implementing for your entire group, especially for those who are really reticent to get into ham radio and get their licenses and all that. So, and since it's all text-based, everyone texts anymore anyway. Nobody likes to talk on the radio. So <laughs> it's just a win-win situation. 
I really think more and more people should be investigating these, but they have their limitations and you have to be aware of those up front. So I hope I was able to explain the use cases for these pretty well and make the case for them. And we really wanna see more and more people with these devices out there so that they become more useful because it's one of those things where the more people that use it, the stronger the capability becomes. So let's all decentralize and not rely on the grid. Yay. So that's all I had. Charlie Delta Echo out.